and analytics, especially Pinterest analytics, it's a little bit overwhelming. Am I right? Yes, I am right. Yes, you open up your Pinterest analytics and it's like, what? There are a million different filters, a million different options. It's overwhelming. I know it is. But here's the thing. You don't have to use all of that information. You can decide what are your goals on Pinterest and then track the metrics that make the most sense for meeting that goal. Hey, it's Tabby with Simple Pin Media and we are here to help you market effectively on Pinterest. Now back to goals. Your goal could be different from another business owner. Like for instance, a blogger probably is going to have the goal of more traffic. They want to drive traffic to their website. Whereas a product seller wants to convert. They want more sales. So you're going to have different goals. And so then you need to be tracking different metrics for the most part. Reading and understanding your analytics on Pinterest helps you know what your Pinterest audience is liking what they're clicking on, what they're interested in, or what they're not liking or clicking on. So then you can know what to create, how to create it for Pinterest specifically. So let's just get into it. Let me show you how to read your Pinterest analytics. I'm going to be showing you on desktop today because really that's the best way to view your analytics on Pinterest. I do not recommend trying to gather data on your phone. Oh, that's a nightmare. To Pull up your analytics, you're gonna to go to the top left, click on analytics, and there will be a drop down with four different options. The first one being overview. This is probably the section you will utilize the most often. It is what we use the most here at Simple Pen Media. And here's what you'll see. A filter section at the top for date and content type, and that would be either for paid or organic types. And to the right, you can click on more filters where you can filter by demographics, claimed account, source, stuff like that. It just depends on how specific you wanna get. And then you scroll down, you see a snapshot of your overall performance, line graphs of your performance over time, and these can be filtered by various metrics. And this is often how I get and record monthly our impression metrics outbound click metrics and our saves metrics because those are the three important metrics to us. And then if this is applicable to you, if you have products, a catalog on Pinterest, you're gonna have top product groups. And then you scroll down, you have top pins, and this can also be filtered by various metrics. Top boards, which can be filtered by various metrics. And I really like being able to see top boards and how well they're doing because then I know what pins I want to pin to, what boards are relevant to my audience. Then we can go to audience insights. So this is where you get a more detailed look at who your audience is and what they're interested in. And you can select either an engaged audience or your total audience. So your engaged audience, the number of people who have engaged with your pins in the last 30 days. And your total audience is just the total number of people who have seen or engaged with your pins in the last 30 days. So keep in mind that it says that it's the audience that has seen your content, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they've actually put their eyeballs on your pin. It could just mean that it was on the screen while they were scrolling through their feed. This is another reason why you should make sure you are creating great pin images that captures your audience's attention. Once you've selected your audience, you can view the most popular categories and related interest. The related interest is really good to see because then you can kind of create content based on that. And below that, you can view demographics info for that audience. So age range, where they are in the world, what kind of devices are they using. This is all just information that's super handy to have so that you know how to speak to your audience on Pinterest. 
Next, we have Conversion Insights. So this is still in beta, but if you have it, if you have access to it, it can be actually quite useful. This page will help you understand the influence your pins have on your revenue. So if you're using Pinterest to market products and to get more sales, this is going to be something you want to look at to see how well Pinterest is doing for you in that area. Now, it can get a little bit confusing confusing if you're not familiar with conversion insights and I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty here in this video today but I am going to give you an overview of how you can read it. So you're going to have various filters here depending on what you want to track. When you scroll down you look at the graph you can compare your paid and organic pins. And looking at that even further, which I think is really awesome, you can look at the amount of page visits you got and then look at how many of those page visits added to their cart and then how many of those who added to their cart proceeded to the checkout page. And then you can just look at your total revenue, what your average cost per item is and you look below that you'll see a graph for your conversion performance over time and this will include various types of metrics that you can look at and then you keep scrolling down you'll get to your top converting pins this will let you know how well your pins are doing if you have a pin that isn't converting well then maybe you can look at your top converting pins and compare them and see what is grabbing your audience's attention better and then create pins based off of that. As you can see, if you are using Pinterest to make sales, this is a great little tool to use and see what is working well for you. And last, we have trends. You can use this tool to learn when people start searching for various keywords, to find out what content is popular on Pinterest, and to see what's trending specifically among your audience. When you open the Trends tab, you will see growing trends in your country that match your pins which is really kind of cool. I mean, I'm going to search through one of our pins here and it gives us some topic ideas that kind of relate to this pin. And then that could give you more content ideas. And then you keep scrolling down, you'll see top trends in your country for the month, which is another source of content ideas. And then you'll see discover section. Use the provided trends table to see what content is popular based on the filters you select on the left. Now there are like a million different options to choose from as far as filters there on the left. The table will display the topic, search volume, and the amount of change it's seen within the week, month, and year. You can click a specific trend to view it on a graph. This is really going to help you narrow down what trends are out there and what is relatable or relevant to your specific audience and your specific business, your niche, what you talk about. Some areas we like to pay attention to here are trends matching our pins. Again, this provides a good pulse on how current content is performing and gives us some more content ideas. Another area we like to pay attention to, and this is more for our clients because a simple Pin Media, we don't have this option because our audience isn't big enough on Pinterest. But for our clients, we like to look at the growing trends for specific interests because this really helps us narrow down what trends our very specific, our own audience, the audience we have on Pinterest, we get to see what else they are interested in. And then if that correlates with our niche, our business, or whatever it is, then we can create more content based around that. Now I want to go back to the top in the search bar here. I really like this tool because I get to take various keywords that I already use in our business and I get to compare each of those keywords with themselves and figure out what's the best keyword to be using in this pin description or this pin title or this board description or what have you. So let's say for instance I'm a food blogger and I'm thinking about making some content based around jello. So I want to figure out what is being searched more on Pinterest. So I'm just going to start by typing jello. 
and hit that. So that's my first word. And I can see a graph of when it's searched the most at what time of year. So now I'm going to try a different set of keywords that has to do with Jell-O. This time I'm going to try Jell-O molds recipe. As you can see, it's really not searched that much because we're not in the 1950s. <laughs> So then I'm going to try Jell-O dessert because those are good, right? I think so. They're doing a little bit better, but then I want to go a little bit more edgy. And so now I'm going to try Jell-O shots. And as you can see, that is doing really well. So if you have content that can be created around Jell-O shots and then use those keywords in your pin title, pin description, then based on the fact that Jell-O shots is searched more, then this pin is going to pop up in search feeds more. Isn't that a great tool? So there you go. That's the walkthrough, how to read your Pinterest analytics. Like I said at the beginning of this video, pick your goal. What is your goal on Pinterest? What do you want from Pinterest? Do you want more traffic to your website? Do you want more sales? Do you want more email subscribers? And then decide what are the metrics that are going to get you to your goal and only pick three. I want you to pick three metrics, top three metrics that you get from Pinterest every month and keep track month over month. Now you're gonna use your analytics, all of the data that you gather, and you're gonna start prepping for the holiday season because that is approaching. And if you need some help with prepping for the holiday season on Pinterest, watch this video next, and I'll see you next week.